Hello, it's Roz and I'm back for a proper scally dandling video today. Um, I'm going to Nicaragua with you and myself and Gioconda Belli, Nicaraguan woman poet and novelist and her book The Inhabited Woman which she wrote or had, was published in 1989 and was translated into English in 1994. The translator is called Kathleen March. In my edition, which is like an old one from 1994, um, it doesn't actually give the name of the translator. I had to Google it to find out. That's slightly shocking. Things have really moved on since then, haven't they? And always on these um, Scottish ending videos, I am, um, oh, sorry about the light above my head. I'll try and keep my head in the way of it. Um, it is, um, I try and locate the country for us because if we're not from that part of the world, we might not be sure exactly where it is. You know, you vaguely know, you, you know, it's Central America, but which bit? So it's in the narrow sort of um, isthmus bit of um, Central America. And it's, that's Nicaragua there. Oh, it's not in, in I'm trying to get it to be in, um, in focus, but I don't think it is. So it's got Costa Rica below and Honduras above. And, oh, pop that down. And it's got a Pacific coast and an Atlantic or, or Caribbean coast. It's also a country of, well, it's a, a smallish country, a country of extraordinary, contrasting and beautiful landscapes. So it's got volcanoes and lakes and rainforest and coastal strip. And, yeah, beautiful place, somewhere I would love to visit. So I was excited to be reading a book by an author from Nicaragua, somewhere that I've um, never read something never read an, an author from Nicaragua before, which is the kind of the point with my, my scally dandling videos, isn't it? I was um, particularly happy doing this read because I got to read this along with Robin of The Quiet Midden. Now, back in January, when I kind of explained about, you know, this whole scally dandling thing and, and um, how I've got this personal project to, to read a book from every country in the world, I said, oh, if anyone fancies coming along, for the ride, as it were, on, on, on one of these, um, do say. And Robin stepped up to um, do the Nicaragua novel with me. Now, Robin is a book, active booktube commenter. Um, so you'll see the name Quiet Midden. But if you go and look, she her channel, her actual YouTube channel is not a bookish channel. What she has on there is some lovely... Um, nature videos, you know, videos that she has made um, capturing the wildlife that live in the northern woods where she lives. Like me, you may be intrigued by her channel name. Now, the word midden meant two things to me. Um, one, it's a word that's used by farmers in, in this country to describe their muck heap or, you know, where their, 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 all the farmyard manure goes. Um, and I thought, well, it won't be that. And the other meaning that I'm familiar with is the is used as a term by archaeologists to describe, you know, when they find a, a, a sort of prehistoric rubbish heap, um, they call them middens and they're really interesting to excavate. But it is neither of those two meanings that Robin is, is, is using the word. Uh, but if you want to find out, go and have a look at her channel and uh, watch a couple of her lovely nature videos. And she does explain on there somewhere. So... Robin and I were um, pleased to find a novel by a Nicaraguan um, woman writer. Nicaragua, for a small country, has actually a very rich literary tradition, um, going right back to, obviously, a sort of pre-Columbian oral traditions stories. And some of those were actually captured in the 16th century in um, one of the earliest sort of written works by sort of indigenous written works in in from from central america it's called um i've got to get the get the name right here el Gueguense, and it's a play a satirical play that brings together it is written partly in spanish partly in Nahuatl or, or nicarao you know indigenous language and it sounds really interesting i'd love to see a performance of it it's kind of like a folklore i suppose but also satirical then probably the best known writer from Nicaragua is um, Ruben Dario, the poet, who's um, described as the, the the sort of father of modernism in 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 um, South and Central America. 
Um, he was a 19th century writer. So if you read Spanish, well, and then there have been lots of writers since, obviously, if you read Spanish, you are spoilt for choice with good writers from Nicaragua, I think. But if you want stuff in English, pretty limited. Um, so, and finding, you know, a, a, a novel by a Nicaraguan woman, yeah, it, there's, there's, there's not much to choose from. And, but Gioconda Belli, fortunately, was a great choice for me and Robin because um, she's, uh, you know, she's an important, I suppose, political intellectual in, in, in Nicaragua. Um, she was born in 1948. She's still alive, she's still writing, um, though not so much, I think. Um, best known as a poet. She wrote this novel. She's also quite more recently written a memoir. So perfect for our, for our, goal I suppose. Um, now to appreciate this novel I think you need to, it's useful I suppose to know a bit about Nicaragua's um, history um, both older you know pre-Columbian and and at the time of the Spanish sort of conquest but also sort of in the 20th century because there are this this the the book the novel has two protagonists two narrative strands that are interconnected the 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 one that's sort of uh, the the present day of the novel I'd say it was sort of in the 1970s and obviously you know this maybe the early 80s this came out in um uh uh, eight, 89 but I, yeah I'd say it was based in the 1970s so that's the, the contemporary um, protagonist I guess Lavinia um, and she I think is based on Giacondo Belli's own life so you also need to know a bit about Giacondo Belli's own life to to perhaps get the most from the book but the other protagonist Itza is a, a Nicarau or um, Nahuatl speaking woman from um pre-colonial Nicaragua who then who is um she's a resistance fighter um against the Spanish um the Spanish colonialists Spanish colonial sort of power in uh, in Nicaragua and you know it's sort of they I mean Spanish came in the 16th century could actually be into the 17th century when she's fight. I mean it, it's not sort of it, you totally clear but she you know they they they're the sort of the the losing resistance and and in the course of the 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 book you you hear them sort of diminishing to a tiny group and 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 this a sad end i suppose counterbalanced with um the Lavinia character who is also um uh, it's not too much of a spoiler. I think it probably says in the blurb, you know, becomes part of a contemporary resistance to um, the 20th century, late 20th century Nicaraguan dictator, Somoza. So you've got those two threads and 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 in that sense, it's useful to, to understand a bit of the history. So um, Nicaragua was first populated in around 12,000 BC, um, but then there have been quite a few people that have sort of moved in and out of there, but the sort of big indigenous populations were um, Chorotega and um, Nicaragua or, 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 or a sort of Na, Na, Nahuatl speaking sort of culture, language. And um, so Spanish come along in the 16th century, war, violence, conquest, usual thing, lovely. Um, 17th century, the... British turn up and they actually the um Atlantic coast of Nicaragua was um a British colony but most of it Spanish um and uh it, it was a country where there was a lot of intermarriage between um the Spanish population you know colonialists and the indigenous population so about 70 percent of the population now would describe themselves as um as mixed you know um mestizo um having said that the elite probably more white hispanic 
in the mix, if you know what I mean. And that is the kind of background that that Gioconda Belli comes from. So she 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 herself is from was from sort of the the the, the Nicaraguan upper classes. So Nicaragua, well, that part of Central America that. Uh, gets independence from Spain in the 1820s, but Nicaragua forms more or less as the country that we think of as Nicaragua in 1838. Interestingly, they kind of lose the Spanish domination, but kind of then it's the USA that um, it, in various ways sort of controls and interferes with um, Nicaraguan politics from from then onwards, really. 20th century dictatorships yeah dominated by dictatorships and in particular the samosa family and they sort of run nicaragua the samosas between um 1927 and uh 1979 the resistance to them um in the so from about 1960 onwards was the sandinistas the fsln i remember when i was um was a student you know we had our you know support the fsln mugs and t-shirts you know that they 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 were you know um a, a freedom fighter come you know socialist revolutionaries Gioconda belli was from say the 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 is from the Nicaragua's sort of um traditional upper classes i suppose but and went and studied in Europe and so on but then became a member of the um f s l n the sandinistas herself drawn in by colleagues in uh, 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 at work and and um because of her feeling for the country this is how we know that the inhabited woman is a sort of semi autobiographical novel um not literally you know lavinia is not exactly gioconda um but the that story in the book is very much built from um belly's own experiences now uh at the, the and and the 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 the, the Sandinistas sort of sort of take power in 1979, as in they get rid of Samosa. But then there's a the the whole um, it, for those of you that know about 20th century history, or you know it was current affairs for people like as old as me. But uh, you know there was the it was the the Contra war. Um, you know so the Contras who were illicitly supported by um, America um, were sort of fighting and undermining the um, uh, Sandinista government. Um, the war eventually ends in 1990, so just after she wrote this 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 book. So that's the background. And you've got these two protagonists. So what did um, Robin and I make of the book? I think we both had um, a sort of a political warmth towards some of the ideas in the book. Um, and... I think if you didn't, there's aspects of the book that would be a bit irritating. You know, it, it's a it's a heartfelt book. It 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 it's a book, you know, Belly, you know, is expressing her um, beliefs about the 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 rightness, I suppose, of the Sandinista's cause in the book. I mean, she doesn't name them in the book. She also, it's 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 called the movement in the book. But you know, it, the whole the, uh, there's a message. The interesting bit of that message, perhaps for me and Robin, was that she's very much writing about um, women's role in resistance or revolutionary movements. And that's the case both for Itza, the um, uh, 16th century character, and Lavinia, the, the modern, the 20th century character. That's the that's like the central theme, I suppose, of the book. If that's the central theme that is going to be interesting to you, you will enjoy this book. What else? What else was good about it? Um, what else did Robin and I like? We both liked the fact that it had two narratives. We liked that structure. We were interested in its story as well as Lavinia's. There's a, a kind of a magical realist element to the book 
that um, Itza's um, character, spirit, as it were, um, in effect enters Lavinia. You know, she is the inhabited woman. Um, Itza is, is somehow in the water, in the ground, and grows into the orange tree in Lavinia's garden, courtyard, and uh, Lavinia um, absorbs her through eating the oranges. If that sounds a bit silly, it really didn't feel silly to me in the book. It almost felt like a kind of like a sacrament, um, you know, something religious. And Robin um, very helpfully pointed out that um, the the Nahua or, or Nicarau um, uh, belief system of, of, and, and, of, and the gods that are referenced in so it's as part of the story um, the water and a sort of is very a really important symbolic um, role in the book and in the belief system you know and a kind of cycle of of birth and rebirth um, and that it, it that imagery is once you realize that that is kind of embedded all the way through the book and we both like that. So and we didn't, so we, we, we didn't have a problem with the with the sort of oh it's a spirits in in, in in Lavinia. That that worked for us. I think it wouldn't for everyone. That's what that's why I say with it in a qualified way. Um and the concept of sacrifice is obviously really important in those um in those the the Nahua or Nicarau, you know, like the Aztec kind of belief system, you know, gods and people sacrifice themselves for the good of society. And that's what it's uh, does, um, chooses to do. And that's what Lavinia is trying to work out if she's willing to do um, in, you know, that she's quite a privileged person. And then she's choosing potentially to join the movement and, you know, put all her, her easy life at risk um, to for the good of her her country. Yeah. What else? What else was good about the book? The descriptions. There's some really lovely um, yeah imagery and description in the book. I, I particularly liked the um, the descriptions of of the 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 physical landscape and kind of nature of Nicaragua you get a sense of it being a very beautiful country and that a country worth fighting for or dying for in part because of that um Lavinia the the character Lavinia goes and she goes back a few times to a special place for her a, a kind of a lookout point on the mountains looking across the lakes and to the other volcanoes yeah it's it's beautiful um, you, uh, you feel the beauty, that's what I mean, in, in the beauty of the writing. Um, there's there's a very vivid section that I really um, enjoyed. Is that the right, right word? It, 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 it's like a kind of, um, she writes about the this sort of weekend guerrilla fighter training school that, you know, she goes to in this abandoned farmhouse up, up, up in the hills. And... Um, you know, you could really feel that, you know, I'm sure that Gioconda Belli went and did exactly that weekend training and, and you know, like picking up a gun for the first time, being tried. I, yeah, it was, um, that was interesting. There's other moments when she um, is in situations of danger and conflict and the sense of how that affects your body and your mind, again, very vivid, very real. She also uses description to really bring home to, I suppose, the socio-economic realities in, in Nicaragua at the time. There's a, a brilliant scene in a hospital waiting room where she's, the character Lavinia is looking at the feet and she looks at her like really sort of well-manicured toes in kind of like really nice, high-quality sandals and she looks at the feet of the other women there and sees the difference and that sort of brings home to her her um her privilege i suppose you get descriptions of the sort of excessive luxury that um the the yeah the the rulers and the allies of the dictator were sort of um indulging in at that time it makes sense of of of, of her of of having kind of a revolutionary fervor 
I suppose. The bit of descriptions that I did not enjoy was the sex scenes in the book. And um, I, they were, oh, they were awful. Robin managed to excise them from her head. I don't know why people, authors, feel they have to put them in a book. But, you know, obviously they do. And they just very rarely work, do they? Let's face it. Anyway, putting that on one side, I think the other thing that Robin and I found hard was not letting our 20th first century sensibilities get in the way of our understanding of the book. So um, Lavinia has a, a, a boyfriend, Felipe, who is so macho and so irritating and and that's the point you know and 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 belly is wanting us to see that and understand you know how hard then it is as 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 a, as a woman to take part in the movement and so on uh, you know and to sort of break out of that and not make the choice to just be um a sort of upper class wife with a life of luxury yeah, all of that you know it's all there for a reason but you still you just you know at times both Robin and I wanted to get hold of her and shake her and say oh for goodness sake you know dump that irritating bloke who puts you down and you know be your own woman and um uh you but you have to not project your you know at, at, by standards of the time you know the, she she's writing a, a feminist book but we sort of had that reaction. Overall, the book left both of us, I think, really interested in Giaconda Belli's life and quite tempted to read her memoir. We both knew, you know, with the benefit of, of um, reading this book years after it was written, you know, some of the things that have happened since. Um, and, you know, we know that the... Um, Belly became part of the um, was part of the Sandinista government um, in the uh, you know nineteen eighties um, and during the time of the Contra you know conflict with the Contras she um, but in then in nineteen ninety the the Sandinista government was overturned in 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 democratic elections so you know you wonder about what did what did that mean for her how did she feel about that. And then more recently, Daniel Ortega, the um, FSLN leader, is, is is back in power and is now starting, well, he's being accused of behaving a bit like a dictator himself. And how does that feel for Belly? What, what I do know is that she's now become a critic, an opponent of Ortega. So, so you know, to, to throw your life and soul into a revolution and then feel that's being, uh, um, I don't know, abandoned or, or, or that there's sort of um let down um it, as you move into you know late middle age and, and and old age she's now 72 how does that feel i would love to know i, I I'm, I'm i'm looking i'm looking for some sort of uh, uh interviews with her and so on so is it a book I would recommend? Yeah, definitely. This is this is this is a this is like a, a, a solid four star book. There are things that are irritations, you know, um, things that are flaws, but overall, as I think Robin said, she was really really grateful that someone has translated this into English so she could um, get inside the the head of uh, the character Lavinia and um, the character Itza and Belly. The, the author and uh, I wholeheartedly agree uh, so um, yeah worth a read <laughs>